Good morning to each of you. And may God bless you as you gather here in his house to worship him and to remember those who have, who have gone to be forever with the Lord. This is All Saints Sunday. Last Sunday we observed the Reformation and today we remember friends, family members, associates, acquaintances, who have gone to be forever with the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. You heard the organ playing the strains of that opening hymn for all the saints who from their labors rest. But before we sing that hymn, if you look at the bulletin page, you see a listing of various individuals, members, friends, associates, who have gone to be with the Lord, including Jean and Donna, Richard and Marion, Helma, Charles or Charlie, Craig, Sherry, Patrick, Honorado, Kerry, Joseph, Gabby, and you know of others in your family in your circle of friends, among your relatives, who have left what we call the veil of tears and now are with the Lord in eternity. That is the meaning of the opening hymn. I will ask you to stand at the final stanza.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our, our sins, sins God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to our Heavenly Father and hear his word of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsively from Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, Lord my, my God, God, you, you are, are very, very great. great. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The, the earth, earth is satisfied, satisfied with the, the fruit of, of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night. When all the beasts of the forest creep about, the young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing the praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him. 
for I rejoice in the Lord. Please be seated to continue your singing. and provides for us with everything he has. Thus was the poor widow of Zarephath able to feed the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17 for many days, as well as herself and her household, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. He feeds us too by his word, not only with daily bread for this body and life, but unto the life everlasting in Christ Jesus by the sacrifice of himself, by giving his body and life and all that he had, he has entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. He is our high, great high priest and the temple of God, as well as the priestly food with which he feeds us. Our first reading for this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwells there. Before, behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our epistle this evening, this morning, is from the epistle to the, uh, the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ has entered not into, ho into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood, not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. 
but as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's put our voices now and let's sing, pass it on. today's gospel, Jesus observes that those who contribute large sums from out of their abundance have done very little. They cannot purchase God's favor with their money, but the poor widow with her two small coins, who out of her poverty has put in everything she had, entrusts herself and her life to the mercy of God. Such faith is not disappointed, for the Lord is faithful, and he provides for his people by his grace. In order to honor the Lord Jesus and his gospel, please stand as you are able. Twelfth chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down across from the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. 
Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, you, O Christ. Christ. We speak our Christian faith with each other in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated to continue with the hymn.
so in that hymn, we covered an entire day, morning, noon, evening, and night. Spring ahead, <laughs> fall back. And so last evening, that's what we did. We fell back. Some people think they gained an hour. <laughs> I say we gained nothing. Midnight to midnight, still 24 hours. Or is today 25? Well, I'll let you figure that out. Spring and fall. Spring and fall. I once had a funeral director in North Dakota tell me that those are the busiest seasons for funerals. Fall and spring. In fall, it seems that some people are ready to make the heavenly trip before they have to deal with another winter. And in spring, other people are ready to make the heavenly trip after they have dealt with another winter. To me, spring has always been a season for optimism, and fall has been a time for nostalgia. Several days ago, I was having one of those nostalgic moments. They come at random, unannounced, uninvited. All of a sudden, they're just there. As a matter of fact, as John was reading the Old Testament lesson about the prophet Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, and how Elijah asked that widow to make him a little cake of flour so that he could have something to eat. It reminded me when I was a little boy, we, our house was here, then there was a vacant lot, and then there was the house over here, and that was Mr. and Mrs. Fry. Mr. Fry was a pharmacist, worked in a drugstore several blocks away. Mrs. Fry was a piano teacher. She used to be giving piano lessons in the room here while my brother and I and some others were playing softball in the vacant lot. And more than once, left field, right through her window. And my dad would have to run to the hardware store and get a pane of glass to repair the window. But Mr. Fry, he would sit on his front porch in a rocking chair. And if we'd go over there, he'd say, you go home and tell your mom I want a sandwich. And so little guys that we were, we'd go home and we'd tell mom, hey, mom, Mr. Fry would like to have a sandwich. And she made him a sandwich a time or two, as I remember. But finally, she got tired of that. So the next time that we told mom he wanted a sandwich, she fixed him a, two slices of bread with nothing but mustard and black pepper. That's the last time he asked. Nostalgic moments. I remember phoning my dad a few months before his trip to heaven. And he answered the phone, and when I asked how he was doing, he said, well, Bug, he always called me Bug. I guess I was just everywhere all the time pestering things. He said, well, Bug, I was just sitting here seeing two little boys, my brother and I, shooting ornaments off the Christmas tree with their bow and arrows. He was having a nostalgic moment. You know, when you give a couple of boys like that one of those little wooden bows about that long with a red and white twisted bow string in it, and then some arrows that are tipped with rubber cups, and you tell them, now don't you shoot anyone. But there stands a tree with all those ornaments. What do you think is going to happen? Adventure. Yeah, big excitement. At any rate, in my nostalgia the other day, I was once again in front of our home at 823 Paris Avenue Northeast in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And during the fall of the year, we would always be out there in the yard raking the leaves, 
and we would rake the leaves down into the street and pile them in mounds and in piles along the curb. And then we would set them on fire and burn the leaves. And the aroma of those burning leaves was almost intoxicating. You remember what that was like to burn the leaves in the fall? And if we had them now and then, we would throw some chestnuts into the fire so that they would overheat, you know, kind of explode like that, send sparks flying. I had those thoughts when I saw this Old Testament lesson about the widow of Zarephath. As the Lord your God lives, the widow tells Elijah, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar, a little oil in a jug, and now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Such a simple thing to gather a couple of sticks a couple of sticks to bake her handful of flour with oil so she and her son might eat it and then die, starve to death. I spoke at Canoga Park Lutheran on October 17 in the morning. That was their 75th anniversary celebration. And I said, the days of our lives and the people in our lives are the gift of God. Thank God for people in the history of Canoga Park Lutheran Church. Many of those people are now forever with the Lord. For many of us, that list may include grandparents, parents, a sister, a brother, a wife, a husband, a son, a daughter, other relatives, and many friends. And now observing today as All Saints Sunday, some of us may be remembering various loved ones. Some of those memories might be of little things. In the grand scale of things, not much more than a couple of sticks, if I can say it like that. You remember certain loved ones who are now forever with the Lord. The sound of their voice. The way they used to tilt their head. The way the smile looked. The sparkle in their eye. How they would stir their coffee or slurp their soup. the way they would tie a knot in an unusual manner. How they would like to tease and pretend to argue or argue for real. How they would be done eating before you could even really get started. So many other memories, not necessarily big things, but like I said, not much more than a couple of sticks, but filled with precious memories for you. Precious memories for you. And so it was for the widow of Zarephath. A couple of sticks filled with precious meaning for herself and her son. A couple of sticks, a little fire. Orville put that into that song, didn't you? A couple of sticks to get the fire going. A couple of sticks so she and her son could have something warm to eat and then die. Now, I do not know how God communicated this to that widow, but as John read, God told Elijah, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwelled there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to
to feed you. God had already spoken to that widow before Elijah showed up. And somehow, God had told that widow, I want you to feed this prophet man. Events unfolded just as God said they would. While that widow was out to gather a couple of sticks, Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of your flour and your oil and bring it to me. And then afterward, make something for yourself and your son. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. You know how long the Lord withheld rain from the earth back then? It was a drought without dew, without rain, for 42 months before he sent moisture on the earth again. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent. Neither did the jug of oil become empty. According to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. And Judy would say, well, you better tell him that there could have been some times in your life when you wish you had a gas tank like that. Like when you ran out of gas on Interstate 94 right in the middle of St. Paul, Minnesota. But the Lord had already provided for that. Just down the embankment, I could see there was a gas station. And there was no trick just to hobble down there and get some gas and bring it back. Or how about the time you ran out of gas on Highway 1 in the Florida Keys? That hot day when you were Oh, you look terrible. You had on a pair of shorts, some raggedy old shirt. And so when we ran out of gas, I stopped. I got out of the car. I said, I'll hitchhike. Judy said, who do you think is going to pick you up? Nobody's going to pick you up the way you look. So she got out of the car with baby Betsy, who wasn't quite a year old. And within two minutes... There was a dear grandmother, grandmotherly lady pulled off the side of the road, says, get back in the car with that baby out of the sun. And she took me to the gas station and brought me back with gas. God can do so much with so little. And you think about that. You need to think about that. You have issues in life that agitate you problems that frustrate you, matters that irritate you, concerns that you do not have the wherewithal to alleviate or eliminate. There are times when you have run out of physical, mental, emotional fuel. You're lacking strength. But then remember this. God can do so much with so little. So much with so little. And there's more to this story. It goes on like this. After this, you know, after that encounter with Elijah and uh, feeding him and so on, and that flower going on and on and on, and that oil lasting and lasting and lasting. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And Elijah said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times. And he cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah 
and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. Elijah said, see, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, well, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Well, Elijah stretched himself upon the child three times. And how did it all start? A couple of sticks. She went out to gather a couple of sticks. Jesus Christ suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. What was the cross but a couple of sticks? One stick went from side to side to include all of humanity from its creation until its eventual end. The other stick stretched between heaven and earth pointing between God and man, giving glory to God and bringing peace from God. God can do so much with so little. A couple of sticks plus himself in the person of his own son, Jesus Christ. Like it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Hear that. All of you out there who may be watching. The word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will thwart the discernment of the discerning. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where are the debaters of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? In the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through its wisdom. It pleased God through the foolishness of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ, crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to non-Jews. But to those who are called, he is Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is All Saints Sunday. Remember your loved ones who are forever with the Lord. Remember all the things that made them special to you. And on your way home today, maybe we should do like that uh, widow of Zarephath was doing. On your way home today, just pick up a couple of sticks. Take home a couple of sticks with you just to remind you that you're not the only one who loved those people. God loved them. And he used a couple of sticks so that they are forever with him. Oh, blessed communion, fellowship divine. We feebly struggle. They in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia. Alleluia. We continue with prayer. We could have sung a few more stances of that hymn. Next time.
Almighty God, our dear Heavenly Father, you have bound your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may themselves die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave into their joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been fed by the gifts of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care. Bless all teachers of your word and those who learn from them. Let the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection be proclaimed to all who miss any loved ones who are forever with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all of those who are in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that they may follow your will and walk according to your command. Grant wisdom and civility to our citizens, and in ways only you can do, be with all of those who serve as members of our military, as police and firefighters, as doctors and nurses and medical caregivers, as first responders and rescue workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve all who travel, those in need, sick and injured, all who grieve and mourn, and those who have asked or are in need of our prayers. Look upon them in mercy. We put them before your throne of grace that you may touch them with your compassion and comfort. Give your Holy Spirit to relieve and comfort them in the confidence of saving faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the middle of things we cannot understand. Help us to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, O Lord, and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In his own words, we stand to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. 
And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing this hymn of your glory. Jesus Christ, the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also at that supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink. This, coven this cup is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, God tells us we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in forgiveness of all your sins. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you from this day forward into life everlasting. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you in the forgiveness of all your sins. to the holy of God. 
Please stand. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. So when the world looks at us, they may see only you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.